okay so uh, so if we have b here and uh, b is equal to 2 1.3 so it's going to be from class float and if i have c and it's like equal to 3 this is a class string and d it's like a data type of list now we have to test the immutability of those objects if they are like can be modified or not now suppose that I want to like uh, test the integer, okay? So the integer data type or the integer class. So A, as you can see, it's equal to three. Now, if I made A equal to six, what's gonna happen? That pointer that was, you know, that reference that was pointing to three was, was no longer exists. And we will create another, you know, like uh, another, address in the memory that points to the value of six. So what does that mean? That means that the integer data type are immutable, okay? Because, you know, like, uh, because the value of A, the previous A, is just floating in the memory. Nobody knows where it is and it's gonna be deleted. However, the new value is equal to six. Same applies for a float, same applies for a string. Now, an interesting point is, like if you remember guys, we said that uh, the lists are mutable or immutable. Mutable. Huh? Mutable. Mutable or immutable. We discussed that in the lecture. Are they mutable? Mutable, so we can modify them. So let, let's take a look at D, okay? And D is a mutable object. So what's gonna happen in the memory when we play with a mutable object? So suppose that I have changed the value of the second item uh, to from two to seven, okay? So D will be equal to 173, and uh, the lists are mutable. Okay, because I can modify them. So when I did the change, okay, of seven, okay, from two to seven, did I change the pointer from D to that place in the memory? No. No. That's why lists are called or referred by mutable objects. Clear? Whereas A is an integer, and when I did the change, okay, I have to create a new copy. However, for list, I still has the same copy, but I just modified the item, okay? Clear? Oh, yes. All right, so, let, let's take a look uh, about another example that will clear any kind of like ambiguity. Okay, so if I evaluated A, it's going to be 6. B is a 3.3. C, uh, remember C like it's a string and it's immutable. So if I try to change, you know, uh, uh, like 3 to, be, uh, to become like 3. So what will happen if I just would like to delete that? uh that character h uh, it's gonna give me an error you if i use the offset uh, like or the index operation now let's suppose that i used b equal to a so i did an equality so now what will happen in the memory that both variable a and b will point to a value of integer equal to six now if i change the value to the uh, like if i change the value of a so a will now point to a new what to a new uh, like a value in the memory that's equal to nine and b will continue to what to point to a value in the memory equal to six that's why like we talk like we said that they're they're uh, immutable now a point of interest is i would like to see the behavior of 
the list when I do some uh, the same kind of operations. Now, let's say that C is equal to D. So both C and D are pointing to 173. Now, if I change any value in C, it's going to be reflected on D. Okay, let's, let's do the animation. So D2 is equal to 9. So the value from 3 will be equal to 9. Okay, now what will happen? C, because lists are mutable, will still point to the same value of D. Okay, so any change because lists are immutable, a change in D will be reflected to C and vice versa. Clear, guys? Yes, okay, I will explain it further on on the like on the semester. Uh, this is called aliasing, okay? <clears throat> so uh, what's the alias? It's a shortcut. So I would like, if I want to like uh, affect or modify a list and modify uh, like a thousand of copies of other lists. So uh, the what I can do is I can do the aliasing and the aliasing will like, will be like just one statement that will affect all the lists together, okay? Now, let's take a look at swapping objects. So if I have A is equal to 3 and B is equal to 6, and I would like A to be equal to 6 uh, and B is equal to 3. So do you know how to do it? Think like A equal to B and B equal to A. What? Let A equal to B and B equal to A. But if I, we did that, uh, like the value, the value of, you remember, like when we pointed here, like A is equal to B, we will lose that value, the previous value of A. We can use a temporary uh, third uh, variable. Oh my God, that's a good approach. We can use a temporary third variable to save the previous value of A or B, and then we do the reassignment, okay? So if we, did, if we did B equal to A, so both of them will point to three, and what I have to do is in order to, for me, like to make sure that I still have the previous value of A or B, I'm gonna use a variable called temp. So temp will be equal to B, therefore, it will point to six. And then after that, I can do my swapping. So what I have to do now, I have to say that B is equal to A. And A will be equal to what, guys? Ten. Ten. Okay. So this is the more, like, you know, the the most used approach to do this. But in, luckily in Python, we have something called parallel assignment. Okay? It's more intuitive, more easier. Do you know how to do parallel assignment? Um, do you do like A comma B equals B comma A? Exactly, thank you so much. Who did, who did say that? Kyle. What's your name? Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. So instead of doing, you know, remember, like we would like to learn how to do our job, our task with the minimum number of line of codes, okay? To make it more effective. So what we have to do here is to use something called parallel assignment and parallel assignment will rechange the values of the variables uh, in one single line of code. So, if I did A comma B equal to B comma A, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? An immediate swapping of the, like, uh, of the values of those integers. Okay? This is an exclusive feature to Python. 
Clear, guys? What's it called again? Parallel what? Parallel assignment. The normal assignment is A equal to something. Yeah? A equal to expression. But here we are assigning multiple variables to multiple values. Yeah. It's just I needed to get the name again. It passed my mind. Parallel assignment. Is it clear, guys? Yes, it's clear. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's take a look at something, you know, a very important. So whenever we create a value inside the scope of a function, this is called a local variable. And whenever we create a, var a variable in the shell, this is called a global variable. So to understand the differences between them, uh, I'm going to give you an example. But local variables will be deleted from the memory whenever I'm going to get out the scope of that function. However, global variables will stay on the memory until I do a new reassignment, okay? So suppose, guys, we have a simple function. That function doesn't do anything except it has uh, like an input uh, parameters number and it's re I'll assign it to five, okay? Now, let's suppose that we did have A equal to three in the shell, okay? And I did call function G of A. So do you think that A will, if I evaluate it, will be equal to three? No. It will be equal to five. It will be equal to, but G of A, So after the function call, I'm going to create x, yeah? x is the function call of g of a, uh, like of g of a. And it's going to do an assignment of what? An assignment of, uh, like, uh, of 5. However, you know, whenever I get outside the scope of that function, a will continue to be equal to 3. Okay, so function G did not and cannot and will not modify the value of A in the interactive shell. This is because A refers to an immutable object, which is the integer. Okay, now let's do the same thing. Okay, let's do the same thing, however, with lists. Okay, suppose that. We uh, like uh, we have like a list that equal to one, two, three, and here what I'm doing is I'm passing an input argument equal to list, and the function will return nothing, except will alter the first item in the list and make it five. Now, guys, the qu the question is, if I call g of lst, uh, h of lst, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna create a new, uh, like uh, a new object in the memory, or I'm gonna still refer to the same object? Still refer to the same object. Thank you, Ali. Like you're good today, man. Thank you. Thumbs up. So when I call function h of lst, what's gonna happen? It's gonna point to the same value of what of LST that is stored at the global scope. And when I do the change, okay, the change will be reflected on the global variable, okay? Because function H can modify the value of list because lists refer to a mutable object, okay? Clear? Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, can you mute yourself? Can you mute yourself? Or I'm going to mute all of you. Oh, 
访问这里结束了。Okay. Check. Okay. So, given those uh, like skills that we learn, I want you to do a function called swap fs. The function take a list as an input, okay, and swap the first and the second element of the list, but only if the list has at least two elements. Okay, the function doesn't return anything. So define the type of contract and do the function, please. And here is some function calls to help you. You have exactly uh, four minutes to finish this exercise.
So anybody finished? I finished. Okay. I finished too, sir. Who finished first? I believe it's Isa. Okay, so Isa, share your screen and show us your like uh, solution. I. So, this is what I did. Um, I just took it in as a parameter. Uh, got it as a variable in here. Mm -hmm. um, added a second. Uh, just added the values from the first and second uh, points of the list to uh, other variables and then just switch them. Okay. But, okay, remember, we have to swap the first and the second element of the list, but only if the list has at least two elements. Am I allowed to use an if statement? Yes, you're allowed. We are in the lecture, we're not in the assignment. So let me help you, okay? Can I? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, you can control my screen? Yes, I can. Whoa. Weird, huh? Yeah. Wait, so how does it... Wait, so how does it work? I accepted it. Okay. So, now, you accepted that, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna delete... Okay, this. Yeah, I'm gonna delete everything here. Ah. Oh. Okay. And I said we have to specify the type of contract. So what's the input parameters, guy? It's a list. Thank you, it's a list. Does the function return anything? No. So. It's done. Okay, it's done. Now, how to check if the list has at least two elements? Uh, maybe list yep. dot length. Exactly. Thank you so much. If length of what's the parameter you defined up? My list. Yeah, my list is equal to with the boolean to two. Boolean? No. Or equal. Oh, right. Yeah, it's greater than right. or equal to, or we can make it equal to one. Okay. Then another identification. What we have to do? Uh, everything that swap the first and the second element. So we have to use the index operation. Okay. Now, the way you did it, you will lose the value of the first element. Okay? Because we did not use a temporary, uh, uh, like a, uh, uh, a temporary variable. So, what we're going to do is it, we have to utilize whatever we learned, which is the parallel assignment. Okay. One. equal to zero. All right. That's it. Hmm. That's the whole function. So run, let's save it. Easy. Okay. Uh, 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 ooh. What's wrong? There's uh, two oh, commas. Comma, two commas. There we go. Okay. So what was the name of that function? Uh, swap underscore fs. Okay. S W tab will give me the name of the function. Now I'm gonna have a list of one, two, 
and three. All right. I'm going to send that. What's wrong with me? I'm controlling. Okay, that's it. Now, what we'll do this function, we'll swap one with the position, uh, we'll make two as the first element and one as the second element. Okay, let's verify. So, enter and we do A equal to this. And so the way. same thing, but I always get an error. I don't know why. What? I did the same, like the same thing that you did before, like uh, doing it now, but I'm always getting an error. I don't know why. But same, you, like you saw, we did it exactly. Yeah, I did, I did the same thing, the same thing, same thing before uh, doing it now, and it's not working. I don't know why. Okay, but because the function doesn't return anything, guys, what we're going to do is we have to print. Okay. okay. You have, okay, redo it again. Do it. Okay, it, retain, like it retains none because we did not return anything. So should you print A? No, no, it's going to be uh, none. So what we're going to do is let's go back and return my list. You see? So even though we did implement the function properly, but the function wasn't uh, like was not returning anything. So now we run it again. I hate, I hate idle. Professor, I should delete my list from uh, the, the function at the top. It, it's going to work like this. What's that? When, when you put the define uh, a swap, uh, when you define the function at the top. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just delete my list from the parentheses. No, because we want the list to yeah, be yeah, a passing but, parameter. Yeah, where, oh yeah, so what I did is I defined the, I created a list inside the function. And yeah, that's uh, one. It. Yeah, but rem remember, okay, we would like to have it uh, as an input parameter. Okay. Uh, keep sure return should be indented. Uh, one tab more. What? One more tab. Uh, it's gonna be uh, inside. inside this that's the problem okay so let's do this again does it run yeah i think it's run from module no. okay because the if statement is an indented properly i think and now it's supposed to run yeah there we go okay so here we go. That's exactly what happened. And here it has to return a list. You see that? Okay. Was it hard? No. No. So you can stop your sharing, uh, Isa. Thank you so much. All right, no worries. Also, wait, really quick. Uh, mm. Is this a dog string? Yeah. Okay, thank God. All right, thank you. All right, guys. Now, before I move to the new topic, I want to discuss some some kind of examples with you. Okay, good examples that will help you understand the assignment better, understand the functions better. Okay. Now, I'm not. I, I hate idle, honestly. So I'm gonna do it in Google Colab.
So this is lecture five. Okay, now suppose that we would like to uh, like uh, So we have a triangle, okay, that has this as a height and this is as the base, and we would like to calculate the area of that triangle. So can we can we write a function that will do so? What's the area of the triangle, guys? I have it's things in best in height. What? I have things best in height. Okay. The height multiplied by the base. Okay. Divided by, divided by two. Divided by two. Okay. So the function is supposed to return an integer value. So what we have to do, guys, okay, let's start by saying here, import math, okay? And let me define the area of a triangle that has, that has what, guys? Base and height. Okay, thank you. The name of the function, area of triangle that has base and height. So what's the type of contract? I want to return the area, okay? What's the type of contract? Number, number, number. Number, number, number. And in doc string, it's what? Number, number, return number. Yeah, in doc string, always what we have to specify the precondition and the main goal of the function. Now, we can say simply area is equal to base multiplied by height divided by two and return We're going to use integer right. division. Return area. Well, it's return area, not base. Oh, thank you. Smart. Okay. By the way, oh. uh, you misspelled height. Uh, over here and in the top as well. So base, comma, height uh, in the second line. So it's H E I G H T. Uh, there's, an, there's an H after the G. And down below, uh, you forgot the I. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now, suppose that we want to test our code. So we have to run it first, then create what and what. Again, the indentation. String in here. Do the enter. Okay, this is exactly where we have to do it. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna return this quick. Thank you. So it works. Now I have to add this. So perfect. 
Now, area of a triangle, and I'm going to send two and three. Okay. And I want to print the value. Okay, this is three. Okay, guys. Now, my question is, um, my question is, now if I added another code, and in that code I want to return a boolean instead. So what should I do? Define a new function or? Yeah, define a new function. The new function, air, like uh, area of a triangle. Uh, we can say return the area of triangle uh, greater than zero. If it's less than zero, it's going to be false. No, we specify it as a precondition. That's it. And as a float, we would do what? The regular, like a regular um, underscore V2. Okay. So let's run it and let's verify it again. Okay. Now we want to have it five. Okay. Uh, Mr. Just heads up again. You misspelled height. Again? Yeah, a but part, the, yeah. Look, like um, I spell it properly. Oh, okay, no matter, yeah, but... okay. Now, if I say here like this, I. I want to print that. Well, still class integer, even though we did what? We did the regular div division. So how to get like, uh, like uh, a float? So by simply specifying one of them as a float, and let's do it again. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, because here it's here, and here it's here. Okay. Yeah, ask Aaron. Aaron, can you 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 can ask me. I'm a bit confused about the preconditions you wrote for this uh, function. The precondition so like, is, you know, like we cannot have a triangle with minus, ba like with a, a base and height equal to a negative number. Yeah, but like, yeah. But like if, it's, if it's zero, the triangle wouldn't even exist. Okay. So, so and the area equal. would be equal to zero. Here? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And you can, like, avoid this by having an if statement. You can. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, okay, what is the difference between this line of code and uh, this function, this implementation of the triangle, and this implementation? And I misspelled height again. So the guy who will tell me, <laughs> yes, I did misspell it again. So let's let's fix it. Uh, 
Will it be that the area of the triangle it will not be returned in the console when you run it? No, one yeah. will return like a float uh, type and the other will return an integer type, right? Would no. it not return a none type like that. printed it? Exactly, thank you. Thank you, Emily. So here we have a return statement. Therefore, when we run it, okay. we'll have a, like a float. But let's suppose that we did the same thing here. Copy and let's add a new cell. No, I don't want to have this cell here. I want it here. I want it here. Okay. Now, this function will do exactly as the area of triangle version two. However, when we print the line three, it's going to be a non data type. Okay. And honestly, like I can even like remove that that line, line two, you know, because it's gonna be already printed. Let's, so suppose that I wanna this one. I, I did comment it. It didn't print it. Why? Because uh, I remember like when we escape the function, everything will be deleted from the memory. So we have to keep it. Uh, oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, professor, why should uh, sorry, print sorry. none? Should you print none? Sorry, sorry. No, 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 one second, one second. Just give me a second because I specify it wrongly. So I have to do this. And I was correct, like, you know, so control V and we have to specify that this is void underscore void. We name it void. Yeah. So void control C control V and control V. Okay. So when we run it here, we like, even if we comment this, What? Name area of the triangle void is not run. No, I just run it here. Am I or instead of of, it's or. Yes, yeah, sir. It's or and of. Area or triangle. Area or. So it will be easier to change it here. Yeah. Okay. So what exactly is the difference between the first 5.0 and the second 5.0? The first one will return like an actual number. If it's like, it's gonna be either like a, a, an integer or a float, okay? However, here, because it's just print, it will return a non-data type. To understand this, we're gonna run to error if I do this, okay? Like, um, Hmm. I want to copy this. And I want to say that A is equal to, okay, so that's supposed to, uh, like, you know, to five multiplied by this. Now at line four, I'm going to run to an error because I cannot multiply five with an untype because it's a print here. You see that? And that's exactly where I have my, my, my error. So you when can you multiply it? Why I cannot multiply it? Because it's an untype. We are not returning any variable. We're just printing. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so if you put print, you cannot multiply. But if you don't no. have print. If I don't have print, yes, I can. All right. Thank you so much. Got it. Got it? Okay. Now. Yeah, thanks. Now, let's have a question, like, you know, uh, an example of 
a function that has none and none input. And okay, so let's go ahead and just add a, a new cell. And suppose that I want to do something similar to the assignment, okay? But in the assignment, it's more like a, uh, it's more like complicated because you have to concatenate based on the length of the uh, the string that you have it here. So this function simply what we'll do, we'll print a tray uh, like a rectangle uh, based on the stars, okay? So does it have any input? No. Does it return any any output? Any variable? All right, guys? No. no. So, if I run this, okay, and I want to just do here a function call, okay, called draw rectangle, okay? See that it's not indented, so it will print you like what three, like a, you know, a like a rectangle, and it will not return anything. Now, why sometimes I need to do this kind of like functions? Sometimes you know, like if I would like to, because you remember, like the main purpose of functions is modularity. So let's suppose that I want you to write a function that will draw three rectangles. Okay? So are we gonna repeat this three times? You can do it three times, yes. Yes, okay. So you think the most straightforward way, but the most effective way is we define a new function that draw the rectangle three times. And look at this. Let's delete this line. And OK, that's it. So we call this function three times. And instead of you know, doing that print set like uh, nine times. So this function draw three rectangle, will draw three rectangles by calling the previous function. Therefore, fulfilling whatever called code you reused and modularity, okay? So let's verify if this is the case or not. Now, draw, I did not run it, so it will not compile. Okay, no, I can say draw rectangle three and so what do you expect will happen? Am I gonna run to an error because I have a function that is here that's calling another function? No, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna be error. It's gonna be an error because what? Your professor is struggling when it comes to indentation. Okay. Now, suppose that we would like to implement another function. The function will return it true if the year, if a given year is from the 21st century or later. So can anybody help me implementing this function? Can you repeat the question, please? I said the function will return it true as long as the year is belonging to the 21st century or later. So I guess we could say define 21st century, uh, the first step, or? Okay, so let's do it together. Okay, guys. So, we will do the following, so. Define, what's the name of the function? Is 21 century and the input argument is year. Okay, what is the type of contract here, guys? 
uh, number to Boolean. Okay, number to Boolean. Thank you. Or we can say integer to Boolean because for sure we don't have 2000 or like, uh, you know, uh, 20, uh, 1.5. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm supposed to indent? Yeah, here. I'm supposed to indent here. So I can simply like what, what should I do right now? So how to determine if a year belongs to the 21th century or not? Less than 22 century. Less than? 22 century. Okay, can we do that? It's very hard. So simply we have a year as the input. So we wanna check if that year is, like, is belonging to the 21 century or later. So how to do so? So we can say uh, a new variable called A, okay? And A should be equal to a year greater than or equal what? 2000. 2000, that's it. So remember, I wanna return that. So I will say return. Return A. Okay. So let's run it. See, okay, another indentation error. Yeah, or A is not defined because it's not inside the. Uh, just a question. Uh, if we were to, uh, shouldn't we also have year should be uh, less than 2100? Because if it goes beyond that, we'll have like 22nd century as well. Mm. So can we just say A equals, uh, here I'll type in chat. You, you're amazing. And, or, and, A, and year, what? Less uh, than, than 2100. Right, thank you. You're amazing, okay. Um, um, just a comment, in the doc string it says in the 21st century or later, so it could also, like we don't, need to add the less than 2100, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. But I wanna make it just in the 21st century. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's test that, okay? So print, okay. I wanna call that is in yeah, 21st century. And inside it, I wanna say, one was born in 199. Yeah, I was born in one in 185. Okay, so I am. Um, I wasn't born in the 21st century, but most of you are from the 21st century. So, as again, 21st century, 2002 because you're first year student, okay? So let's do it. So unfortunately, I'm much older than you guys and you are still in your youth, okay? Clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's suppose that I would like to define a new function that will compute the area of the circle. So how can I define it? Area of the circle. So what do we need to define the function like, uh, to calculate the area of the circle, guys? Need the radius and pi r squared basically we need the radius and we need pi yeah pi is already given though what the pi is always the same so you don't really need pi. yes exactly but we need to import the pi from the math library oh yeah okay so to do that to do that guys 
I'm going to simply copy my implementation because it's going to. So you can either define a new variable called area, or you can do it more intu intu intuitively by just having this return and you know instead of just doing this return we do, we do this and we delete that one okay let's run it no issues because the indentation is taken care of it and let's test it okay so to test it we can test it on another cell no, oh, no, no, I don't want text. Please. I want to sell. Okay, so here we're asking the user to input the radius of the circle and we're converting it, converting it to what? To a number, okay? Then we're calling the function and then we're printing the area of the circle given its radius and the value of the area okay so let's do this it's going to ask me come on dude what is the what is the radius of your circle we're going to say it's 10 and we press enter so the area of your circle is 10 the area of a circle with the radius of 10 is 314.0 159. Okay. Uh, I'm a little lost at float input. What exactly does writing float do first? Well, okay, let's go out here and do the following. Remove the float. So, what's going to happen? Those guys who watched my lecture, like lecture uh, 3.1, can please answer uh, answer your friend. You're gonna get an error. Why? It'll be a string. It's gonna be a string. So once you run this, you're gonna enter a value of 10, but then after that, you're gonna run an error because you are doing what an like a, an, a mathematical operation with a string okay in other words let's let's make this type then we do radius and we're gonna get an error but i okay okay i can do this Comment this and comment this. Okay. Then look what will happen. So the type of radius is string. So when we do the when we do when we wrap this function with float or evaluate evaluate. And we do the same thing here, and we enter 10, and enter, it's evaluated to an integer, okay? Now let's do 10.1. It's gonna evaluate it to what, guys? Hmm? Evaluate it to what? Yeah. Inter integer or float? Okay. Okay, and as such, I will be capable to do my calculation later. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Oh, what's what again? Oh, huh? four is decimal, right? Float is decimal? Or? Uh, float. Float is 
you know, like a number with a decimal point. All right, thanks so much. It's not an integer, you know, like 10.1 is a float. 10 exactly is a, a, just an integer. 10.0 is still a float. Okay. So it's any real number. Yeah. All right, thank you. The float is the biggest class that contains both the integer and the boolean. Now, let's have a function similar to what, guys? to question 13, question 12, and question 13 in the assignment. But suppose that I want you to define a function that convert a second to minute and second, okay? So we start by specifying the name of the function, which is second to millisec uh, to, sorry, to minute and second, and then we specify the type of contract. The type of contract is here, guys. What? Number. Number. And it's going to return a number. And it's going to be what? It's returning two numbers. OK? All right. Now, what is the goal of this function? Convert second into minutes. Did I spell minute? Okay, minutes. Second. Okay, so if we have, you know, 70 seconds, how many minutes we have? One minute and 10 seconds. One and 10 seconds. So how do we calculate it? So minute is equal to second. Divided by 60. Floored by 60. No, sorry, floored by 60. And? The new value of second. Uh, it's the um, modulus, I think. Thank you. Good. You're good. Mod six. Okay. Now, what should I return? I'm a nurse. What? Return M comma S. M comma S. But in this way, am I returning a number and number or am I returning a table? Number. No, number. It should return a number number. Are you sure? I think so. A tuple? Yeah. It's a tuple. Okay. So. Okay, let's verify it, okay? Let's verify, it. you know? So, I wanna say that A is equal to what? To S underscore, okay? And our example was 70, okay? Then I wanna say print A, And let's do it this way, tie. Now it guys, it's a class tuple. Therefore here we have to say tuple. You got it? Oh, I'm sorry, what's tuple again? Okay. You know, when you ask me a question, I assume that you already watched my lectures. So the tuple is an immutable version of a list. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 
Is it clear? Now, say that this is an 85. So we still have, okay, you know what? I want to do something. 1,250. So do we know how many minutes? Okay, it's very hard. So let's ask the computer. Okay, 20, sec 20 minutes and 50 seconds. Okay. Now, let's add a new code. Now, suppose that I want to define a new function that will take seconds and convert it to hour, minutes, and seconds. Okay. Type of contract, guys. Number. Number to what? Same, Same thing. thing. Number to that. Okay. So let's save time by doing this. So how we can do that? So if we have 120 seconds, how many hours we have? Divided by 2,600. Divided or flowed? Hmm? Uh, sorry, what was that again? Divided or flowed? Wait, what's four again? Four is the double uh, uh, slash, right? Yeah. Can't be, of course, that one. So it's floor. So hour will equal to second divided by 3,600. Okay. Okay. Now, second, the new value of second is equal to what? To whatever we floored. Yeah. Before we do that, can we just do minutes first? Minutes is equal to uh, uh, the remainder of this, or how we do minutes then? How we do minutes? Is it possible to do minutes in this, or is it not? Yes, it's possible. But you know, now now we we strip the number of hours. Now we have to get back to second. Okay. So the second, what will be the remainder? Uh, we use the uh, percentage for now, percentage. So S percentage 3,600. Okay, that's one way. Or we can say that S is equal to the new value of the previous value of S minus the hours multiplied by 3,600. Okay, it's the same, the same thing. Now, we would like to have the minute and the second. So what should we do? Uh, okay, Mr. First of all, uh, class kind of finished. So just give me the heads up, but I'll still stay here. Uh, what? what did we skip? Class just finished five minutes ago. Okay, okay. Uh, so, so I still want to continue this. Yeah. Uh, so minutes, can we just say uh, minutes equals first uh, hmm. So, okay, the most intuitive way is using our function, the previous one. Am I correct? Oh, well, yeah. Okay. And in order to do that, what we have to say is because we're going to call it and it's going to return a tuple. So, what we have to do is say that TPL is equal to this and then return okay our and TPL. All right. Now let's do the same thing here. Let's do like a, a quick test. Oh, 
4,250. Okay. And instead of this, it's going to be HMS. Uh, just so you know, A is still indented. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? Beth. Beth, thank you so much. Beth, I'm going to help you at your test. Okay. Hey, 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 come on. Okay. So that's exactly, guys, how we can. We have one minute, one hour, 10 minutes, and 50 seconds because she helped me. So anybody who helped me, I'm going to, who helps me, I'm going to help him or her. Okay. Is that clear, guys? Yes. Okay. So I guess I'm going to like uh, stop sharing. So those who has class, they can go, they can leave. Those who has a question, they can stay and ask me. I'm still a little lost about the last one. Uh, did you just did you just send it to me in uh, my mail or what? I can review. I'm a little confused about the last very last thing we did. Uh, can you send it to me by mail? Uh, a screenshot of it or? Well, uh, the, the lecture will be already recorded, so you have to redo it. Okay. Actually, okay. Uh, can you can you? Uh, Open the stream again one more time. I, I want to screenshot it myself, and I think that should be enough. Okay. You know what? Oh, 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 what's your name? Uh, Akram Atassi. Akram. Akram. For you, Akram, I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna upload the code. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Uh, have a good day. You too. Maisha. Hi, sir. So I wasn't aware that the. Uh... Our uh, assignment is due today, so because um uh, I did my assignment on Virtual Studio Code, and it, everything runs properly here, but uh, when I opened it with Python after it goes to a reverse integer function, it crashes for some reason. So Amisha, you know I had my office hours. We had the discussions. We have the TA's office hours. So why you did not benefit from that? Because I thought it was due yesterday. So still, like, you know, you have time to fix it. Well, because on virtual studio code, it says that there is no error. And even when I look over it, it seems like there's no error in my code. What What do you mean? Because, like, uh, in virtual studio code, if there's an error, it usually highlights it or something. Uh -huh. and it doesn't do anything. It says everything works fine. And when I run it, everything runs fine. Uh, where? In virtual studio? Yeah. Okay. And? If everything runs fine, so what's the issue? Doesn't have to also run well with Python. What? Doesn't also have doesn't also have to run well with Python. So you, you like you did it on Virtual Studio okay. with which language? Uh, in Python. Okay, so you're good then. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, much. Yeah, Professor, I just have one small problem. <laughs> um, uh, I submitted my assignment uh, on Saturday and everything is pretty good. Uh, nothing uh, is bad. But I just noticed now that I have uh, in two questions, the doc string, the return type, I put it home. Okay, you, can, you can resubmit your assignment. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Riley. Uh, my question was the same as his, if we could resubmit it, if we realized we had a mistake. The last submission will be marked. That's it. Okay, thank you. Janet. Um, I just wanted to clarify that um, how like how I'm doing doc strings is correct. Uh, can you just give me a quick rundown of how to do doc string, like a short description? A short description of the run uh, of uh, the doc string? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we have multiple examples here. Okay, so here it's com like uh, computing or calculating the area of a triangle. So, and we have the base and the height. So those are the type, oh, first of all, we have to de define the type of contract. What's the type of contract? We have number and number, We and we are returning the area. So number and number, and we're returning a number, yeah? So yeah. what's the main goal of the function? Retains the area of a triangle with a given base and height, knowing that those base and height are non-negative numbers. That's it. That's th that's the doc string. Now, okay. 
now let me show you something like and this this thing is very 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 like uh, very uh, like um, okay let's do it on idle this time you know control c and where is my idle that's idle okay boom now run run module save it okay okay so for this function like uh, area of triangle and we have uh, i always use two in order to get the height at the, at, as the area so 20. so we're gonna get what 20. now without doc string if i do help okay like let's let, let me show you the uh the function here let's remove the doc string okay okay uh, i forget your name what's your name jeanette jeanette I forget your name. Without doc string, the function will run properly. But the thing is, when I do help, okay, and area of triangle, and then it does does it tell me anything? No. Except the name of the function and the input argument. Okay. But let's go back here and control Z and run it again. And let's do the help again, Janet. Okay. Okay. Lock, Janet. It's okay. give me the type of contract as well as what the goal of the okay. function and the preconditions. So this is a good way to document your function in a way that the user of, uh, you know, like if somebody else would like to import your function, and I'm going to teach you how to import your functions later on, uh, mm -hmm. they will know exactly what kind, uh, what's the goal of the function, and if there is any preconditions, and what kind of input they're supposed to enter, and what is the output, okay? Okay, and uh, we also make sure that the inputs are included in that description, the, in the doc screen. Yes. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, scene Butler. I, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry. Uh, hi, Professor. I just have two quick questions. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first question, I'm sorry if this is a repeat question because I feel like it is, but um, do the preconditions in the doc strings also have to go in as actual code in the functions or can they just be in the doc strings? Because, okay, sometimes the conditions, we need to implement them with F. So they don't need to be like uh, an actual code. Okay. You know? So for example, like if one said like, it had to be greater than zero, like I don't actually have to write that in the function yeah. itself. I can just put yeah, that. Because in. you have to use F. And okay. I told you not to use F. Okay, okay, sweet. That's perfect. And then my other question is just a question I spoke with about the TA earlier. And that was, um, are we allowed to use uh, tuples? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, perfect. Vanessa? Uh, hi, Professor. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, I just had a quick question. So because assignment one was, um, like the deadline was extended, um, assignment two hasn't been posted Will it still be due next Monday or will it be due like a week after whenever it is posted? Assignment two, I will yeah. Uh, yeah, I will determine the deadline in the instruction. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Okay, Maruf. Yeah, so in the doc string, so if there is um, a function that doesn't have any parameter, what do I write in it? Okay, if the function doesn't have any parameter, it's none. So just write none? Yeah, just a uh, none. And if it doesn't return any parameters, return like it's none. Similar yeah. to the uh, like uh, draw rectangle that I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Emily? 
Uh, hi, Prof. Um, I was just wondering, in the last example question that we did, um, mm -hmm. the pipe was considered a tuple, and I just didn't understand why it was classified a tuple in that case as opposed to an integer. Okay, so let's share the screen again with you. Okay, and let's take a look here at the question here. So when we return, like uh, here, uh, minute to second, okay? So we return minute, comma, second. And this is exactly how we define tuples. Am I correct? Okay, so if you're returning the same kind of like, like value, because we're returning S as, uh, and S is as well the input, because we're returning yeah. what the input is, it's considered tuple. Yeah, we're returning two items. So one, comma, two, okay? Okay. What is the type of A? Uh, it would be a string. Why? Did I specify the quotation? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so what is the it would type be a list. Of okay, did I specify the square bracket? No. <laughs> so what will be the output then? What will be the object type? A tuple? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. So okay. Uh, let's do it again here by doing the So what do you think the type hit now? Uh, a list. Why? It's a, it's a regular parenthesis. So what's the type? Uh, Emily, just, you know, focus a bit. So we remember in the tuple, the parenthesis are optional. Yeah. So what's the type? So it's going to be a tuple? It's a tuple. Okay. Now let's do this, Emily. What so is now it? it's a list. It's a list. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect, Emily. Okay, I got it now. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Manan. Hi, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, same thing as some other people asked. Um, I'm pretty much done. But um, I realized I had some errors, so I might want to fix it. Um, just want to confirm, um, as you have said previously, um, a day late uh, cuts 10% from the mark, right? Yeah. All right. So, like, let's say I submit, like, I don't know, today at 12 a.m. It will be the mark minus 10%, right? Exactly. Okay, thank you a lot. Have a good day. You too. Anybody else has a question? Paris, do you have a question? No, they uh, they got answered. I just had questions about doc strings, but you answered them all. Okay, good. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else has a question? Sean, he, you. Sean. Uh, uh, yes, uh, you can hear me right. Uh, question about doc string. I didn't like include any doc string in my assignment. Should I just go and edit and resubmit it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody has a question? If you don't have any questions, I'm going to end the, the lecture right now. Okay, I believe nobody has any question. So, guys, I wish you a very wonderful uh, afternoon or it's evening. Okay, goodbye.